Hey guys, it's Bryn from the Mama on the Rocks, and we are here for our expert interview uh, for our true parenting community. And I am so excited because anytime I get to invite another writer, another mom, especially another special needs mom, it's like my favorite thing ever. So today we get to speak with Kathy Radigan, and she actually has just started a new blog from her original one, right, Kathy? So Kathy is like, in yeah. my opinion, yeah. so famous for the most hilarious, like, relatable mom memes <laughs> um, when she was just yeah. possessed. And uh, right. now, yeah, now she writes um, The Special Needs Nest with Kathy Radigan. And um, one reason why I reached out to her, first of all, I have read your words forever and ever, amen. Um, but, um, Kathy and I are uh, in a small group of other special needs writing moms and kind of help each other, share each other's questions. And I know in our group, we have several moms, especially who have joined us recently who have older teens, young adults, tweens, um, or, or adults who are living at home because they either have special needs or they have mental health or behavioral diagnosis like our extreme kiddos. And I can't speak to that. Uh, as an expert because our kids are so young. And so, Kathy, give us a little introduction about you, about your kids, and about kind of why you got into this writing space, why you felt it was it was important to kind of share your story. Well, I got into it about 10 years ago. My little one was starting kindergarten, and I had been wanting to write for a while. Actually, doctors and therapists and teachers had said, you know, you should write about your life because Elizabeth has a lot of issues. She has a brain disorder that falls into a leukodystrophy category, which is a white matter. Mm -hmm. um, but she also has a dual diagnosis of bipolar. So there's a lot going on yeah. with Elizabeth. She's my, you know, main kid. And then, but my boys both have, you know, issues, but I always call them like the garden variety issues, like Thomas has dyslexia, Peter has ADHD. And if those were my only two, I'd probably be like, oh my gosh, this is killing me. But because I have Elizabeth, it's like, <laughs> right. Like nothing. What? <laughs> <laughs> but because so many, I had therapists in and out of my house for like 12 years, I think. Yeah, about that. Because each one had early intervention and then, you know, each kid had their own path. Elizabeth certainly has the most complicated path. Um, and so one thing I always really kind of missed, well, I didn't have a lot of time to read, but when I did, I always was kind of bummed out that everything was very um, sad and depressing. And, and not that that's not there, and I, I don't mean to, because sure. we need to see that. But I was also looking for something that was a little more tough, like a little more humor, a little more laughter, a little more lighter, because if I did uh all the time, I would not make it. I just yeah. can't do that. It's too depressing. Yeah. <laughs> so... When I started writing, I started, you know, using, I, I wasn't, I didn't want to just do special needs. I wanted to do more mom. So that's kind of what I did. And I was in that space for 10 years. Um, and as we got older, I just guess I felt like it was the time to now start splitting the, the one cat from the other and to start focusing. And I think also because I did notice that there was not a lot of people writing about um, the older special needs kids because it's harder. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to give voice to that. It is. And it's also, also, I think what I'm really trying to do with the nest now is kind of make it really about the family because, as you well know, if you have any, you know, it becomes a special needs family. And as, especially as they get older because, you know, there comes to be some very practical things. You know, we've been doing, you know, guardianship for Elizabeth and, you know, planning things. And now all of a sudden my older kids are now, you know, well, my older son and my younger son you know, are now, do you know, be on the list of guardians, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's very, it's complicated. I've never wanted my kids to feel like they had to take care of Elizabeth when I was gone. But then you start hitting the practical, yeah. the practical mess. So, um, so that's when I started writing more about that. So that's been since October. And I've really liked it because I, it's funny, even though I've always, because I don't think I ever had like the special needs category. I never, you know, I always wrote with different people, always hung out with different people that were in the special needs. Community. But now I'm meeting so many more people. It's kind of cool. So I, I do like it. Yeah. For that's, sure. that's and I was so excited to have you on here because when I very first started this 
small, much smaller paid community, you know, I talk very openly about my own struggles with mental health and of course what our story with our son. But once the Mama on the Rocks page started blowing up, like I never thought that would even be a thing in my life. It was like all of a sudden all the trolls come out and people can be really nasty and they don't understand and that's okay. But I needed a space for me. So I'm very open with this community that will be watching this video. Like this was totally selfish. Like I needed nope. to be safe. And because when we're talking about things like you bring up guardianship, one of the first experts we ha ever had on here was actually a friend of mine from high school who I had not seen in 20 years, but she found me because her now, let's see, she has four kids and her oldest is now 20, just turned 22 and he has autism and he's total care, um, she will be in her guardianship forever and ever, amen. And she just spoke to that and that it was just such a raw, emotional but in the best way kind of conversation yeah and i think a lot of parents shy away from that but that is our reality and i think we yeah. need a safe space to talk about yeah. our, our in-laws or our neighbors saying well have you done this or you shouldn't do this and it's like look this isn't your story you're right and people people don't know how to handle it and they don't really like to deal with it when um I remember when Lizzie was younger, people would always say to me, like, but she's going to be fine, right? And fine meant, you know, some sort of career or some sort of job or some sort of career. And at one time, I just, and I was like, if you mean fine, like, she's going to go to college and leave my house, and no, I don't think so. No, she's not going to be fine. Like, and people needed that from me, like, but she's really okay. Yeah. You know, yes, she is, but not in the way you think of that and I think it's also redefining that mm -hmm. um, yeah. is what is you know I and I also I hesitate I hate this is so silly but I mean I almost hate saying like well, she's always gonna need help because you never want to put that out in the universe oh, like sure. I don't know yes <laughs> but I know considering that Lizzie is 19 and I had to give her her shower get her dressed and you know she was getting my haircut today with my mother and they're going to like the real place like the place oh, yes. my mom and I get her hair we usually go to supercuts but now that she's 19 we want to you know she's getting her hair dyed we're doing it in two days and I you know I, I doubt there are a lot of mothers of 19 year old girls who had to like totally make sure they were showered make sure you know and I don't love doing it and she really you know part of Lizzie's issues that make it so complicated is um there are parts of Lizzie's brain that are totally functioning, but they're just, you know, it's very, it's like this computer. You have this great computer that can do all this stuff, but um, it doesn't always work. So you have to like hit it or move it. Not that we hit our daughter, but, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, so I know I used that expression one time when I was trying to describe her to one of the neurologists and I was like, not that we hit yeah. her. <laughs> That's a really good analogy, though, is to say, like, it's like you can do, you have a touch screen, but you can't open Microsoft Word. Like, it's like the, sometimes a basic function, what seems basic to us, does not function the way we would expect it to. And yeah. she, you know, she gets sometimes frustrated with it, but she also, she spends a lot of time in kind of like her own fairyland. And um, it's just very much there. And I, I can understand why. It's probably very frustrating to oh. be able to know things and not be able to get them out and you know she'll do these kind of weird speech things so you know if she's trying to get her seatbelt on she'll you know cry you know paula which we have no idea who paula is or the, uh, the thing that annoys us all now is she has this little limey and she'll start singing little limey and the boys will be like no 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 little limey <laughs> okay you know I feel like for my husband for yeah. no reason She's not really calling for my husband. She's just upset. And so she's trying to figure out. She's like, daddy, daddy. And I feel like I need to tell you guys, I can't believe I didn't say this in the beginning. I was so distracted by my mom hawk. I just got a shower, you guys. And as you all know, I don't even care. I don't care what I look like. I don't look at it. I can't, I don't have my contact sense. I could look awesome or horrible right now. It doesn't matter. So I just live my life. But here's what I need to tell you about Lizzie. Every chance I get, when, and I've taken a social media hiatus for my mental health lately, but I am all the time telling Kathy in every comment thread I can, Lizzie is my spirit animal. This woman is my hero. I need you to know I love her headbands. 
I love her attitude. I love how hilarious she is. I want to drive to your house a million miles away from me and pick her up and go for ice cream. Like, I adore her. She yes. would love you. I love want to you. have a dance party in the yard with Lizzie. Like, she would so much fun with you, Brent. And she, you know, she would easily take you over me any day now. She's, you know, totally 19. She, you know, we hear it all the time. Although, again, like, it's not like, well, sometimes she'll say, I hate you, mom, which is really, yeah. you know, people are always like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, what? I'm sorry. I hate you, mom. That's a great sentence. That's she said, normal. Right. It's so normal. Yeah. Um, she said it to me then. She's like, sometimes I just hate you. I'm like, well, you know, I'm your mother. You're a 19. You're supposed to. That's okay. That tells me I'm doing something right. I'll accept my award now. Thank you. I appreciate it, Lizzie. No problem. Um, so but she, so she calls me the mean queen sometimes. You are the mean queen. Yes. Lizzie, ha you guys, I'm serious. I mean, I'm going to tell you at the end. I'll remind you to go follow Kathy, but I am not kidding. I, like, Lizzie's stories give me life. Like, I'm, I can look it up when I'm just having... True. I don't really embarrass them at all. They are all true. It makes she me feel, not. like, less alone. It makes me feel like finally someone gets it. And also, I, for real, like, in the days I want to escape, I'm like, that's it. I'm packing my car, and Lizzie and I are going for ice cream. I don't care if it takes 13 hours to get there. It's a happy she like, do. No, she's, you know, that's, I mean, in the beginning, I think people, well, when Lizzie was smaller, um, the teacher have admitted to me that they thought I was crazy and just inventing these stories because you know, she'd come and she really wouldn't say much and um, you know Lizzie would go she wouldn't speak a lot and then I you know in the beginning I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with her and we're going every place possible and then one day, I think I was pregnant with Peter or just had him and I'm waiting and I always talk to Elizabeth anyway so I said Liz what you doing she goes I'm reaching in the cabinet for some cookies. I'm like, reaching cabinet <laughs> Like, what? How is she yeah. saying that? So I told her teacher that, and her teacher thought I was crazy. I didn't know that at the time. And then so one day I picked her up, and she's like, um, Kathy, I have to admit something. Uh, we thought you were just kind of maybe not on planet. But today, they would hide Lizzie's lunch when she was little. They did that to all the kids to make them talk. You know, like, oh, where's our lunch today? Not a mean thing. You know? They're like, oh, where's our lunch today? So... Lizzie got tired of it. So she started drawing and they were like, Lizzie, where's your lunch? And she had like said hardly anything. She's like, it's behind the chalkboard. <laughs> and then that's I'm tired of your shenanigans. Give me my dag on sandwich. Like, Give me my lunch. Let me draw. Enough this of it. is why I love her. And, and that's kind of what she said. So she may not say anything, and then she said, like, you know, her other classes would say, like, you know, she doesn't say anything, and then all of a sudden, we're asking a question. I think they were asking, like, who's Barack Obama? And we were a very political family, and we, we talked about it. And she's like, um, they're like, who's this? That's my, my, my kids have not left the house yet. This is very costly, sorry. Um, but Lizzie's not here, or you would be hearing little Limey. Um, you know, and so they're like, all of a sudden, you hear someone going, mm -hmm. like, what? She's like, Barack Obama! <laughs> I'm telling you. You never know, and you never know where she's going to come. It's sort of like, I think sometimes if you read, if you know people who have to do with their parents with like Alzheimer's or something, like that sometimes reminds me of Lizzie because sometimes she'll just forget. Like you'll say, like she'll do something a million times and then all of a sudden she won't. And you'll be like, Lizzie, we're, we're, you're going to make your bed. Oh, Lizzie, you made it yesterday. I did? How did I do that? Yeah. And that's oh my so God. interesting, and I wonder if you see this with your son who has ADHD because you talk a lot about executive functioning, and that is such a disconnect, and our boy is that way, and he'll, just the other night, he was like, but you're, since you're standing right here, can you just show me how to do it the right way? Because, you know, to him, it's like, I just throw this, like, if I just cover everything up. Yes. And so that's a basic, it goes back to that. Word doc doesn't open. Everything else works. I can yes. do the whole presentation. I um, relate to that actually for myself as a dyslexic that, you know, oh, yeah. I don't, it, it's so funny because my, my oldest is also dyslexic and the youngest who has ADHD is much different. He's much more spatially aware of life. Mm -hmm. We think he's brilliant. He's probably just average <laughs> because he can do everything we can do. We're like, give it to Peter to do. Like Peter just thinks differently than every other member in our family. Yeah. Peter never 
Peter never loses anything. I, it shocks me. Like, we, he hadn't had school for all this time. And I'm like, you know, you're going to have to find your ID. He's like, it's right here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but so Tom and I walk in and we'll leave our shoes. We'll open cabinets. And, and we're always like, we just can't. And my mother would get so frustrated with me as a child. Like, don't you see the shoes right here? No, actually, I don't. Like, I just take them off and I've gone on to six other yeah. things. So what I would love, I, we kind of touched on this a minute ago, but I'd love to kind of circle back to the idea that, and I know Lizzie's um, diagnoses don't match everyone's, and that's something I talk openly about in this group, is that every flavor of diagnosis is represented. It, I mean, I don't care who you are, like somebody's got something, or they're yeah. being evaluated for it. Like, so we have a wide variety, which I love, and I love to learn from those different sources. And so... I'd love for you to speak a little bit to, as our extreme children get into tween, teen, young adult age, regardless of their maturity level, I don't care. Right. Talk to me a little bit about how you reconcile as a parent the fact that parts of their brain are fully neurotypical in the fact that they're recognizing their peers are doing things they quote unquote can't do or maybe they don't expect to do. And I know that is very frustrating and that can manifest in outbursts that can manifest in inability to articulate and at home you know one thing we've talked about recently actually this morning um our discussion thread was about how do you keep them safe from themselves and others especially if they have siblings when they're just they're just manic i mean because it happens it does happen and so talk to me a little bit about what that's like as a parent when you're trying to promote independence but there is also those those realistic drawbacks well, there's Lizzie independence is kind of how I see it because there is, it's different than the boys, you know, when we talk about executive functioning stuff, okay, so Tom might need to remember how to put his shoes, you know, but he'll do that. He was in a dorm, his life was fine, you know, he figured that. Um, but Lizzie, um, she can't. And what's frustrating is she does, there are parts, you know, she loves heavy metal music. She like listens to these videos. And one thing that's hard for me is my oldest son is kind of a champion until he'll be like, well, she should be able to watch. I'm like, and this was very, uh, she was watching something that was really, it would probably have been fine for a 19 year old. It was totally inappropriate for Lizzie because they were talking about you know, sexual abuse and stuff like that. And he's like, well, she should be able to. I'm like, okay, I get what you're saying. But if she walks into school and says her brother sexually abused her, we're going to have child protective services, my dear. You know, this isn't, you know, yes, yeah, she knows her, but if you, you hit certain notes. Yeah, you're, they're mandated reporters, so it yeah. So I have to be careful that she doesn't get into things. And she did something the other day. I don't, I don't always talk about everything Lizzie does because I have to sometimes process it myself. Of course, of course. But um, she was outside and uh, Tom went for a run. Uh, my husband and my son were out. And she was outside playing, and I can hear her. We have the fences all blocked and locked, and you know. And I was in my room, and I didn't have anything on. I was just doing some work, and I could hear her. And I'd even checked on her a few times. And then I hear our gate, and I hear my son. So I'm like, oh, okay, because they're home. And I get out because I hear the gate. Mm -hmm. but I didn't know, and I don't know how because I have like the hearing of like a dog. <laughs> she must have like sneaked out. So we had an oil delivery, and they didn't rechain the door. And I'd been out. And my husband had been out. So we both thought we had chained the door. Yes. So what I didn't know is the gate I heard was her coming back in. She went out to go around the block without us. And she knows that's like a no-no. Mm -hmm. She saw my husband's car. <laughs> she beelined it back because she knew she was in trouble. Again, I love her. <laughs> but, uh, right, which is fairly funny, but the He's scary like, I'm busted. I got to get back to it before <laughs> someone gets me. She knew. I, I said, "Oh, it's over, man. Um, they'll never be. You know, they'll never let me do anything." Yeah. And the fear that went into like all four of us were traumatized. Top Peter, poor thing, was like all day and yeah. night. He woke me up at four o'clock in the morning. Do you think we should put an alarm yeah. on? Yeah other door now. like 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 should we have a lot of ever because the idea and i felt so guilty because i'm like i should have been out there i shouldn't you know i shouldn't have assumed she was going to be okay just because we have all these double tongues and you know the the idea of her getting out is just terrifying because she might be able to say i'm lizzie radigan and i live on 80 maybe but she also might be in like la la land 
And, you know, I would talk with her teacher the next day and I told her what happened. And the teacher said, well, what would happen if someone, you know, if, if someone told you they had a puppy? <laughs> she was like, well, I wouldn't go. Okay. Then that moment she was really lucid. Yeah. But I have no idea what. Well, so that goes back to that independence piece and how do we balance it? Because you want them to have that. And there isn't. Have to be I think, yeah. yeah, but some can't. Right. Like it's just she can't. And I've said this to her, I've tried to be real, like to talk her psychiatrist says I should always deal with the highest part of Elizabeth, which I, I love to do, but it, it's sometimes hard. It's yeah. um but I've said like Lizzie you know, you have a brain disorder that can be really complicated and sometimes you just, I'm, I know you don't want us around you all the time, but you just have to for your safety. You know, she took a walk with my son the other day and she, uh, he's calling me going, oh, I just need to have you on the phone. So in case someone, she was just started losing it. She was like, get away from me. Get away. And like, we were like, listen, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, she's very tall. She's very pretty. Mm -hmm. When you first look at Lizzie, you may not know there's something wrong with Elizabeth. And I would never know. I would never know. You see Lizzie walking with my son and he's blonde. She's dark. Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> Can you say hi? That's oh my funny. goodness. <laughs> you are cute. Hi. Um, if you see them walking together, you may think it's a boyfriend, girlfriend thing. And you have, some, you know, I was like, and again, we talked with her teacher and her therapist, and they were like, you know, Tom could get hurt. You, you know, you think of all the things that could go through your head. You know, someone attacks Tom because they think they're helping Elizabeth, you know. Of course, yeah. So that's where I get stuck, you know, where, and I feel so on all the time um, because it is, you know, it's like having a really big, I'm like a, not I'm like a big baby. I call her my puppy. Like she's a puppy sometimes because she just does things on instinct. Yeah. And, you know, whether she'll be able to sometimes know it's not, you don't know. You don't know who you're yeah. dealing with. That's the hardest part, I think. Yeah. And I agree with that. And I think that's one thing. <clears throat> I know some of our parents who have older extreme children in the group have asked which like I said in the beginning is why I wanted, I was like, I know the exact person I'm going to ask. Like, um, but I think it is really across the board, regardless of age or functional level, because we're all experiencing that hypervigilance. We're exhausted, hypervigilance. We're exhausted we're all the time. Like no amount yeah. of meditation or sleep or naps is going to get us caught up to 20 And I think that's something people just don't understand. You know, they'll be like, oh, but and right now she's not in school. We're doing remote because we don't, you know, the idea of Elizabeth getting sick and it being in the hospital with possibly me not being there to interpret for her is terrifying. So we, I mean, my husband is, we're so hyper vigilant with that. Like, yeah. you know, we just, and everybody knows like we don't, because I don't want Lizzie to get sick. So she got her first vaccine, which is very good, but we've been doing remote schooling. So that's been one thing, but like people will be like, oh, well, when she goes, you know, when she's out with, Joe, you must relax. I'm like, yeah, you know, no, because Joe might call me. And <laughs> yes. And I, I talked about that recently because um, when we visit, we don't live near family. When we visit. Uh, family, I don't know how you do that. It's exhausting. Um, and you don't trust anyone, which is no fault of anyone else's. But was, like, I'm glad you mentioned that because I just actually spoke in the group last night. I was responding to somebody's comment. I had posted that. Like both of my kids are in sleep regression right now. I, I am not sleeping like at all. And I'm, I'm toast and I'm in grad school and I work and I'm doing all these things. And it's like, you, people don't recognize you still have to real, have real life. And so I love that you mentioned that a while ago is that, isn't it funny that we really have to almost not only handle our regular life, handle our you know, and all the logistics that go with that, but it's also like we have to make things comfortable for everyone else around us. Yeah. Even the people that are sometimes supposed to be the sort of specialists in that. Um, even people who love us dearly and sincerely want the best for us and our kids. It's just like they just need to hear it's going to be okay. And sometimes the answer is, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be okay or okay as you see it. That I think is the biggest change and the thing that people probably don't realize when you're going into this, but you will, and I don't, um, I don't want to scare people, but it, it's sort of, 
no one will really know. I think my husband probably is the closest one to maybe know what I'm going through, and, and he's gotten so much better with, you know, he's always a great dad and a great husband and a great partner, but I don't think he fully understood because he was out at work all the time, right? So he didn't completely get it until it was probably about seven years ago I got really sick. No, it might have been older than later than that. Maybe Peter was younger. But I got really sick, and um, I had this... I guess I didn't know about it. and Peter was sleeping with me. Yeah, and I guess he was like four. And he hit my head, which is fine, but it burst and all of a sudden I'm like really sick. Oh my god. So the doctor was like, yeah, I don't know, we should maybe put you in the hospital. I'm a little worried. And so my parents took the kids, they lived they lived um six blocks from us, and Joe was on for like three days. And after that <laughs> Yeah, it's I it should change so much because he was like I call it like because it's like can't let Kathy die. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Spin says all the time like <laughs> he dies. This is on me. You live to your two hundred. Like I cannot. I can't. And he really saw everything I do because there's a million things I do that you don't even know I'm doing. And like when the trains run on time, it's not because oh, see they could have done it all the time. No, the train ran on time because I prepped her. I did this. I was caught. Like you're just constantly like watching. You built that train, and you didn't even know it. Because I think we always just <laughs> coming in and being like, um, just so you know, like I loaded the dishwasher and took out the trash, and it's like I'm not setting off a party because I did 23 things before you got up this morning. Like, <laughs> is really good. Like he's it's a bit of a control freak, but a nice control freak. He's not mean about it, but he needs to like you know he needs to know like everything is done his way, and I've kind of been able to be like, okay, fine, <laughs> do it. Um, but I'm doing 80 things mentally, yes. and there's nobody doing that. Yes. There's nobody for that. So, like, Joe, you know, took over the – after that, he started thinking, like, he could help me if he just organized all the medicine, which is great. So he organizes all the medicine. He does that, which is a great thing. But I still have to know who gets what, what gets what, is it in, it, and it's constant. And so, you know, but other than my husband, very few people, even my parents who are lovely people, and, and we would not have been able to do this without them, they really – so I think people don't understand it's hard for parents to see their child, their child, and their grandchild. It's that's something that I think we don't really, you know, because we're so in our own stuff, we don't realize, but you know, our sisters, our brothers, our dearest friends, it's hard for them to see. And you're different. You're just I'm different. I'm not you know, I try to be the same Kathy, but I'm not. I'm just not. Well, and I think, oh gosh, I don't remember. It was probably a year ago now. My parents were actually the experts um, for one of these videos. And that was, I, it was a very prayerful consideration for me because I knew it was going to be difficult. Um, you know, and my parents were very honest. And honestly, it was a very healing process for me just in that 30 minutes because it was really a cool perspective to hear my parents talk very openly about the, how hard it was for them at first yeah. to watch me struggle, to yeah, watch right. their marriage struggle at first when we were kind of figuring it out, and then also to watch their grandson who they adore, and they're trying to educate them because that generational gap is so wide when it comes to things like mental health, um, and just also to hear like, you know them really pleading with people on here that would watch the video saying you're never going to convince a relative parent spouse whomever partner that they're they need to want to support you but if they're in the place where they are willing then you need to provide them education because that's the most helpful thing is just trying to understand and and that's a thing i think is missed in our society is as moms not always, but mostly as the mom. We're a constant source of educating ourselves because if we don't, what, it'll all fall apart. Like, it'll no, it will. Yeah. Well, then it means there's no one for you. And I remember, like, you know, I always had a therapist, and that was kind of like my person. But even now, like, I remember, like, the therapist would ask me some questions. Very, you know, honestly, you know, since Liz and I have this person, or, I remember one time we were at the pediatrician, and um, the pediatrician started asking questions about early intervention because her son was doing it. And my, I'm 
telling our stuff, and my father was with me. My father died two years ago, but he was an incredible help to me. Mm -hmm. My father goes, listen, I'm really proud of you that you know all that stuff, but um, aren't you frightened that the pediatrician is asking you? That's cool. Oh. Like, Dad, welcome to the party. Like, like but they also, I, like, my husband would get so mad because I walk, we... Both the psychiatrists we see for our daughter uh, were very, like, you know, Harvard trained, and they, they were teaching at NYU or Cornell, and I'd walk in, and i go, you know, I don't think this medicine's working. I think we should probably up it. I didn't, and Joe would be like, will you stop telling the doctor? And the doctor would go, I listen to Kathy. 100%. Yeah, please stop. Kathy knows what she's doing. And you feel like, you know, but you do, you walk in, you, I have no compunction of saying, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think that's right. <laughs> It's true. And I don't tell see. people like it, empower yourself to like find the fit for you, whether it's a specialist, yeah. a doctor, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, whomever it is, because I think people feel like they're just supposed to trust their doctors and they fail to rec recognize <laughs> doctors are people. Yeah. And you have two things. Like I always feel like you have to have you have to have people who are on your corner, but you also have to have people you trust that can say, you know, I think the doctor's right. Yeah. I think because sometimes you don't want to hear it. I mean, you just don't. You're like, I'm not in the space. I don't want to hear it. And you need someone to go, mm, I think you may be right. Yeah. So I think you have to have both sides. And it's not perfect. And you're just going to make some mistakes. Well, and you before, are. Zoom, before Zoom cuts me off because I refuse to pay them, um, <laughs> I would love to hear just like, as you transitioned with Lizzie and, of course, your other sons and the, and the uh, diagnoses that they have, um, as you're transitioning to parenting older children, because they're always going to be kids, I don't care how old they are. Um, just what what piece of advice do you wish you would have known that you can kind of encourage moms? And I, and nothing's going to scare anyone. We're very honest. I am very honest to a fault. I wish I would have known this because honestly, it would have saved me some heartache or or headache or always having to be on or whatever that it's just like, this is our reality. And, and what would you tell them? Because I know we have so many moms that are just desperate for people to get it. So they're raising these older kids or their kids are aging. Someone may, they, you may not find that perfect person who's gonna get it all. You just might not. And it, the quicker you know that you might have to get things in different pieces, the better, because no one, no one person is gonna be able to understand it. I mean, your, hopefully your husband or your partner will. Um, I'm lucky with that. but. You may not find somebody like that, and you'll you'll knock your head. You know, um, also in trying to get people to understand your life, they're not going to yeah. understand you. And, and so, tr don't try. You know, like I, my my sisters are lovely. They love my children, um, but they don't always get it. And I spent a lot of time getting angry about that. And now I'm like, they just don't, they don't get it. And sometimes something will happen where they'll be in a little bit of my world, and they'll be like, "How did you do that?" I'm like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did I have another choice? Because let me know if I do. Because I was welcome to my world. But I think that's if that's if I could say one thing, accept that you you may, you're not going to find someone who's going to know. You're probably not. Um, and find people who love you and can accept you. And maybe you have to do that in different pieces. Maybe your therapist is really good here, and your husband's really great here, or your partner's really good here. And, but um, if you're the one in charge, you're the one in charge. Yeah, and I love that because there's a lot of freedom in that, even though it takes mm -hmm. sometimes a long time to get to that space where you can... 55. I'm 55. I've had... I've been in therapy since 21, so I'm, you do the math. It's a lot of money. I can buy a small house for the amount of therapy I've had. Um, yeah, it's taken me a long time to say... Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, you'll be batting your head on a table yeah. trying to get well, people to understand how hard it is. I think that's the reason that so many of us who are, and I say so many, but our small, our special needs writers group is very, very small. Um, very small. And w especially compared to other writers groups that, part of, that both of us are a part of, that it's like, oh, there's people everywhere that are talking about being a mom and it's hard or it's great or it's funny. And it's like, yeah, our life is all of those things. But if we're really letting you into what I call like the dark and cobwebby places, like you better have your big girl pants on because yeah. and I think not everyone's ready for that and that's why I feel like this it's not I don't try to and I 
I'm t- I, I, you know, I do with my writing. Um, you know, I'm careful with my writing. I, I, you know, maybe not as open as I never lie about anything, and I'm always open exactly about how I feel. But I may not share every crevice of what's going on with the kids and stuff because that's their life, and Same. I'm gonna always do it on my side and. Um, you know, I'm always, people always are oh, so open and I, I am, but I'm like, but there's a heck of a lot you don't know. And it, it's not, you know, it's not, it's just because it's not for public consumption. I, I don't think you have to put everything out there. Um, yeah. I just don't. So, um, I think you can pick and choose what you want as long as you're being honest about who you are. I'm not trying to create this wonderful life, but I, yeah, there are some things because I don't want the trolls after me. I really, I actually don't care if they're after me. I don't want them after my kids. So, like, if I write something, I don't give a damn. But I don't want anyone. So I'm, you know, kind of careful with that. And I was like, I had written a piece that had gone, you know, had done pretty well about, you know, the R word and kind of how I feel about that. And I was getting like, on one thing, it had like 900 comments. I'm like, I said to my son and my husband. Please just keep reminding me. I don't want to hit those comments. Don't read it. Stay away. Right. I did. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. But there's such, it's also a beautiful part of sharing my story. And I think my parents were never sure exactly how they felt about it. But when they started seeing people send things to Lizzie or like embrace Lizzie, it, that's kind of, I was like, well, that's why I did it. I wanted the world to know her. Yeah. Or at least know something like that so that they could go, oh, okay, that's not scary. That's just yeah. Elizabeth. And especially with diagnoses like bipolar, because that can be a very, like, neutralizing word in, in our society. Well, I think because I'm lucky in the sense, not lucky, but because Lizzie has so many issues, you don't, you just see a, a child with a lot of issues. Right. So you're not seeing somebody, it's, it's different. I feel for parents who have adult children who have mental disorders and are really struggling in that, because that's, that's, tough. that's a whole other kettle of fish that I kind of been protected with Elizabeth. Um, well, Kathy, I know time is so valuable, and I'm so grateful that you took time to talk. Oh, I'm so glad I did. I'm glad I got to million, There's a million other things we could talk about, so I'm going to brainstorm because we're going to set up another time just to chat. I love seeing Of course. I want to see Lizzie, if, if it's just me and her doing a Zoom, and I can learn from her, what she's learned in music class, because I love, those are some of my favorite posts ever about her. Would love, yeah. No, she would love it. Um, tell people that are watching this, where can they find you now? You can find me on Facebook on um, The Special Needs Nest by Kathy Radigan or My Dishwashers Possessed. Um, I also have a public page, Kathy Radigan. So if you just do Kathy Radigan, you'll come to that too. And I, I share some other things there. And you guys will see, of course, in the in the um, community, it's all private. So they would have to copy to share things. But I share on the mom on the next page. I share from Kathy all the time because I think she's hilarious and brilliant and so wonderful. Yeah, you on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, you can always, yeah, I'm, everything is, I'm an open book. And I do that on purpose because not only to support my friends who are doing brilliant work, but I think for me, what's important is a lot of these women are speaking to places I can't speak to and it's a way for us to educate, to offer resources to educate the public because that's, if for nothing else, that's why we're here, right? I agree. So Kathy, thank you so much. I adore you. Send Lizzie my love and um, talk soon. Okay, bye-bye.